one for small painters, colleges, just do the painting right. and... Um, and we have a few conservatoriums for this music. Oh yeah, that's right. We have two of them. Oh, to learn an instrument or...? Yes. Yeah. And also this who are piano there. Oh yeah, who... <laughs> I don't know the word. Benio who sets the tune for the piano, yeah. you know. Oh, the tuner. Yeah. It's a the tuner. piano <laughs> tuner. <laughs> and then we have a one restaurant. College. College. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's around 15 small ones in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. But they are really, really small. Yeah. So. so the restaurant would, they would be cooking and things like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Chef, chef Chefs training? Chefs and waitering, yes. Yeah. Are they pretty good schools? Have you seen these schools? Yeah. Well, this one is quite good, I think, yes. Yeah. I mean, by the time the students get out there, they can go right in yeah. and yeah. start cooking at um, maybe a fine restaurant or something. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So can our students yeah, also in our, the same field? But yeah. our, our, we do cooperate with the college. Yeah. Right. And we educate much, much more more young people. They can a little bit choose who they want to take and we take everybody in. So mm. Because we are run by the city. city. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this, um, how to say, social pressure. pressure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that we also have a skills center within the college. Is that under adults? Yeah, it's under, yeah, it's technically under the Adult Institute, but the whole idea is for the um, young migrants that come to Finland that have the permanent residency in uh, Helsinki, mm -hmm. that they are helped out in all sorts, all, all levels of life in the same center. So they are trying to pl re be placed in work life or at the college, but they are also given the help for the social security and healthcare and all the services that they all need under are roof, under yeah. the same roof. Wow. So they don't have to go from place. No, they don't need to go, and it's them that will con. If they don't have the service over there, they will contact the other services that mm -hmm. they need. Wow. And they really <coughs> emphasize on looking on uh, what the customers need mm -hmm. and what they all, what their skills already are, mm -hmm. so they can be <coughs> placed in the right place. Mm -hmm. As I said that before, everybody in Finland followed the same path from the kindergarten. To the university level now, there are these incomers <coughs> that have not followed the same path. So, looking at what stage they are at and how we can help them. Mm -hmm. And it says studies in social and health care and service communication. So, that would be like what? Uh, yeah, that, that are the same study program. So, uh, the Adult Institute is still separate. Oh, it's still, but it's, they do, can do all the same programs. They can do the, all the Got same it. programs, but at the moment they are, yeah, separate. Mm -hmm. And the kids start here, the students can start at age 15? 15, 15, 16, yeah. 15, 16. But, as, but as low as 15? Yeah, when yeah. they have their basic education completed. Yeah. So what do they do? I'm just trying to figure out. So when they're in the, the, the basic school, do mm -hmm. they kind of sit down with the parents? See, this is, this is fascinating because in the U.S. we don't do this at all with to try to guide kids to what they could actually do in life. We tell them they're all going to go to college and they either drop out or, you know, they, if they do pass, which is, they do get a high school degree, which is not hard at all. Um, just basically show up and they're, they're going to pass you through. Uh, then at the end, so many kids are left without anything as I talked to you about. So, do they sit down then with the, the is, is there a certain point where the counselors get the parents and say, or they ask the student, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, there, there is uh, study counseling in high schools right? all along the course. There are classes assigned for the study counseling and what are you going to do next? And I think they, those plans are still discussed with the t uh, parents as well, what the students will apply yeah, think, for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how it's working now when it's... Uh, it's electronical. electronical. But before you had to, once you applied to the um, 
high schools you wanted to go or the study programs right. had to be signed by the legal guardian. I think they are still taking the papers out and uh, parents have to sign it and bring it back to school before yeah. they send it. Yeah. But I mean, is there, there must be some type of communication with parents to say, hey, your kid's probably not going to go to be able to get a university matriculation test and we need to set them up for... Yeah, but in Finland you'll get the university also from here, so yeah. it's not the problem which yeah. you choose. Okay, you yeah. can do both. Yes. It's just a much smaller amount of people. That's yeah. Small, yeah, yeah, that yeah. follows that path. But and most are called maybe the University of Applied Sciences, mm -hmm. not right. this academic university. I guess what I'm saying, in the basic school they must talk about some of these things with the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this, yeah and we have open days, so there are school groups that come for visit. We have a big study fair where all the possibilities, it's not a next step anymore, what is it called now? It used to be next step, yeah. but now it's something. Who comes there to talk to the kids? From here, the college? From here, from, from, the, from this uh, Lukio. Well, yeah, from the upper secondary schools, there are study personnel, that study councils. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think these uh, schools are having this kind of evenings for the uh -huh. parents. Uh -huh. And they tell about the possibilities, mm -hmm. and they started, I think, one year already before the eighth. But they probably, I'm sorry, but they probably actually ask the question to the student, "What do you want to do?" Or yeah. what Because this is something they don't ask in yeah, the U.S. Yeah, it always goes Just, from the student. We always yeah. right. it's the person. And in the U.S., they take the, yeah. The U.S. system, it's more about this is what you're going to do, mm. right? This is what you have to do. Not it's. Like I said, there's the, as a teacher, I can tell you, it's not about asking. We never ask the student what they want. That's we do ask a lot. Yeah, Maybe right. I think we started already in the sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. I don't know when right. they started already this kind of. Yeah, they do tests yeah, on what could you be, what could be you become, mm -hmm. or are your. It's a process. It's a learning process. You know yourself. So mm -hmm. we put quite a lot of emphasis on on the self-esteem of the kids and uh, personal knowledge mm -hmm. and them taking the ownership of their learning so um, I guess it comes from there so they have the autonomy to decide but it's still even though it's half and half it's still quite inherited which path you follow so um, you are most likely to come to a vocational co uh, college if your parents, parents yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. and if your parents were university driven, you're more likely to go to the yeah. university. Yes. Yeah. But you do have the possibility for both because both are free. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, and universities are free. So um, it's not a question of money. So if you are from the working class, you could, you couldn't afford going to university. Is that not the case? But it's more right. the attitude. Talking about I have talked about Rukka. Yeah, because it's for these children who don't know what to do. Yeah. Actually, if you don't know after nine grade what I will do. Yeah. And so it's also for our students that are in the risk of dropping out, so we can put them to the open vocation college. So they don't use their study time, but they still get back on track. So they can be taught a bit of life management skills and um, other courses related to your subject. And also also think what, I, what you really do. want to do. Yes. Yeah. What age do they do that? After ninth grade, so yeah. 15, 16. If you don't know where to apply, then you go to Brugge and Brugge. you learn oh, about they, it. As I said, that they can work in the workshops. Are you talking about the pre vocation? Yeah. 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 But they also can go to the 10th grade, which yeah. is in the, another way. Yeah. To, we have two, uh, two different yeah. places. Yeah, where you can you just, know. you know, get your grades up yeah. or you can also learn about vocational qualifications mm -hmm. or a mixture of both of them. Yeah. If you had low grades you can go to the in tenth. basic school, then... There's the 10th grade, you can be one year more. Oh, so you could, even if you had low grades and you said, I want to be a welder, if your grades were low, you could go into the welding program or yes. you'd have to get the grades up higher? You could get to the welding program, yeah. but if you are we're not so sure that is a welding program really for me, mm -hmm. then you can have that extra year. Yeah. And but that's the 10th grade is also, um, it's 
if it's a um, general 10th grade, it's also for students that know that they want to go to a general upper secondary school, mm -hmm. but their grades are not good enough to get in, so then they are there to raise their grades.